If I wanted to know the size of the Earth, I could jump on Wikipedia and have an answer in seconds. Or I could just Google it. And if I didn't want to go online, there are thousands of books which would tell me. But what if they're not telling the truth? You know, what if they're lying to us? So I'm going to find out for myself. In this video, I'm going to measure the size of the Earth. And to do that, I need to head for the coast. I'm going to measure the Earth by measuring its curvature, how tightly the surface bends. And to do that, I'm going to use these and one of those. I'm at Nash Point Lighthouse on the south coast of Wales between Cardiff and Swansea. It was built in 1832 and has been protecting shipping in the Bristol Channel ever since. Well, I'm standing in direct sunlight, but already that light's on. It's late afternoon. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to head to the far side of the Bristol Channel over there, across the water, and I'm heading for the North Devon town of Ilfracombe. It's 28 miles or just over 40 kilometres away. By the time I get there, it should be dark. And from there, I'm going to look back across the water at this light. And that's how I'm going to make my measurement. So how's this all going to work? Well, I've got a long drive ahead of me, so I'm going to explain on the way. Never actually seen a foghorn in my life. Never heard one either. I wonder what that sounds like when it's at full blast. Are they even used anymore in this day and age? Well, Ilfracombe might only be 28 miles away as the crow flies, but it's a lot longer by road. Got to go right the way around the Bristol Channel. Google Maps is telling me three hours, so quite a bit of driving ahead of us. And by the time we get there, it should be evening and hopefully that light will be on. The long drive will give me a good chance though to explain how this measurement is going to work. I won't do it now, I'm on quite narrow lanes which are tricky, but um, once I can relax a bit I'll explain what this is all about. I'm halfway to Ilfracombe now, so probably time to explain how this measurement is going to work. I mentioned before that when I get to Ilfracombe, I'm going to look back across the water at the lighthouse. But the thing is, you can't actually see the light from Ilfracombe if you're standing down at sea level. But there's a hill in Ilfracombe, and if I stand at the top of the hill, I should be able to see the light. I'll be high enough up to look over the curvature of the Earth and be able to see the lighthouse. But what I'm then going to do is I'm going to work my way up the hill gradually until the light just about becomes visible. I'll then look at how high I am above sea level. I know how high the lighthouse is above sea level and I also know the In distance. 300 yards at the roundabout, continue straight onto Quantock Road, A39. I know the distance between us and from, from those three values, I can plug them into a formula and work out the size of the Earth. Anyway, more on that later. Well, I'm here in Ilfracombe at last. It was quite a drive and it's gone dark as you can see. But anyway, now we're set to try and make our measurement. Look over towards that lighthouse. One thing I need to do first though is to calibrate my altimeter. My phone's got a pretty accurate altimeter in but it does need to be calibrated down at sea level. So I'm going to walk down the steps and get just above the surface of the water and uh, set the zero reading. Then, if you look behind me, that little hill with the church on the top, we're going to head up there and see if we can spot the lighthouse. So I descended the steps from the harbour wall to the shore and zeroed my altimeter. Then I walked to the top of the hill with the church on it. I realise that the church is no longer a church, but is now a lighthouse itself. Once at the top, I could look across the water to Nash Point. OK, well, I'm at the top of the hill now, and I've just been looking over across the water, and I can see a flashing light. So now we're ready to make the actual measurement. We can see the lighthouse from the top of this hill, I'm now going to gradually work my way down the hill until I see that light disappear. 
Then I'm going to use my phone's altimeter to see my altitude above sea level. So let's head on down there. So I worked my way down the hill, I had to go right to the bottom and climb over the wall and out onto the rocks until eventually the light disappeared. Okay, I've worked my way down this quite dicey set of rocks and steps to the point where the light is just starting to disappear below the waves. If I look at the light, sometimes I see it and then sometimes I don't as the waves bob up and down. So I think it's time to take my measurement. So I'm going to get my phone altimeter out and see what my height is. And the altimeter reading is, will this focus? I left autofocus turned off, so no, it won't. Anyway, it's 16 feet. I couldn't calibrate it in meters, but that's an easy conversion. OK, so now we've gathered our measurements. My height above sea level was 5 metres. The height of the lighthouse varies with the tide and when I took the measurement, it was 65 and a half metres above sea level. So now it's time to do some calculations. Let's start with a simple formula for working out a distance to the horizon from a given height. The formula is distance equals 2 times the radius of the Earth times the height plus the height squared, all square rooted. But this ignores refraction. The light from the lighthouse to the observer is bent around slightly by the atmosphere, which means it can travel a bit further. A rough rule of thumb is that it goes 8% further, though this can vary a lot with conditions. So here's our adjusted formula for the horizon distance. Now, let's assume the books are telling us the truth about the Earth's size and that its radius is 6,371,000 meters. Using this, we get a distance from the lighthouse to the sea surface of 31,200 metres. And my own distance to that point is 8,620 metres. So, a total distance of 39,820 metres. But we know that the actual distance between the two places is 44,600 metres. So my own distance calculation is 11% shorter than the actual distance. OK, so it's a couple of days after I shot that video. My original plan was to get a pen and paper and do the calculations on the spot. But by the time I shot that last part of the video where I was sitting out on those rocks, it was close to midnight and I had a three hour drive ahead of me to get home. So I just wanted to jump in the car and be home. So anyway, the final conclusion there was that there was an 11% discrepancy in the distance I calculated to the lighthouse versus the actual distance we know to be true, which would suggest that the Earth is a bit bigger than they're telling us. But the discrepancy is bigger than it might seem. The size of the Earth is related to the square of the distance, so this 11% discrepancy becomes a 23% discrepancy of the size of the Earth. So does that mean the books are wrong, that they're lying to us and that the Earth really is 23% bigger? Well, I don't think so. The problem with the method here is that it's not completely accurate. First, there's my altimeter on my phone. It's, it's fairly accurate, but it's not perfect. It gave my height above sea level as five meters, but it could have been out by a meter or two. But I think the biggest variable in this equation is the refraction of the light. The way the, the light from the lighthouse bends over the surface of the sea. The rule of thumb is that the light can go 8% further as a result, but this can vary a lot with weather conditions with the temperature of the seawater and the temperature of the air above it. So overall, I'd say that this video was a bit inconclusive. Now, I was hoping that my measurement would be closer to the real value, if I'm honest. I thought I'd get within 5%. To be out by 11%, it, it doesn't actually conclude anything, I think. What I've decided to do is I'm going to do another measurement of the Earth size in a follow-on video using a much more accurate method. I'm going to use a sextant, if you know what one of those is, and the North Star. And that should give me a much more accurate and therefore conclusive measurement of the Earth's size. But anyway, I actually had a lot of fun going down and filming this video and saw some lovely scenery on the way. Hope you enjoyed watching it. So this is to be continued. That's all for this video. See you next time.